Premier, thank you for your time. Thanks, Leigh. 25,000 Australians are currently stranded overseas and they want to come home. How many extra will you accept in WA for quarantine and return? Well, Western Australia is currently taking 525. That's the second highest number of all the states. Uh, we've said to the Prime Minister we're happy to have a conversation about what we can manage. Obviously, we want to have the Commonwealth assist us because, as you know, uh, quarantine is a Commonwealth responsibility. So we're saying to them, let's have a proper discussion about what Western Australia can manage. So they've said they'll give the ADF to help out. So are you saying how it, your numbers will be dictated by the amount of assistance they give? Well, that's correct. We currently have eight hotels uh, with uh, people returning to Western Australia. Uh, our health advice is that is um, difficult. You know, that's really at the extent of what we can manage at this point in time. But we're more than happy to have a conversation with the Commonwealth. If they want to provide extra resources, in particular ADF, uh, we'll look at what else can be done. But it really is uh, something the Commonwealth needs to lead. You've got about 15,000 empty hotel rooms, um, I understand, over there. Wouldn't there be some hotels that would be crying out for you to take a few more people as a way for them to make some additional income? Uh, well, I don't accept that figure, and obviously we have a big campaign to get people to stay in our, our hotels, uh, but you've got to remember what happened in Victoria. There was a melt... You know, there was problems with their hotel quarantining. We don't want to end up in a situation where other states have that problem with hotel quarantining because there's too many people. So what we just want to do is work with the Commonwealth to reach a solution that is in the interests of Western Australia, Australia and people returning home. Coronavirus cases everywhere in Australia except Victoria are in low numbers and they're being managed fine. What logic is there in continuing to unnecessarily punish people by keeping Western Australia's borders closed? Well, we're not unnecessarily punishing people. We're ensuring that Western Australia is kept safe. Uh, and we've now had 158 days with no community cases of coronavirus in Western Australia. What that has meant is that our people are kept safe, our mining industry continues to operate effectively and provide enormous income to the entire nation and the Commonwealth Government. And we've got an economy now that is uh, going ahead in leaps and bounds. So whether it's retail, hospitality, tourism, uh, whether it's car sales, land sales, Western Australia is le leading the nation easily, and that's because we have an economy back to normal. But that would uh, be... In the other states, of course, they have all... Sorry, Premier. Um, that, that would be a logical answer if Australia had rampant community transmission everywhere else, but we don't. Yeah, but other states have rules and restrictions in place that restrict economic activity. We don't. So it's very, very different here uh, to the eastern states. Yeah, but we're what just talking about allowing people to come in and out of Western Australia, like Western Australians living in Sydney whose mum and dad live in WA that they would desperately like to see. Why shouldn't they be allowed to go when there are so few cases? Uh, well, because it's risk, but you can apply for an exemption. So we have a hard border. You can apply for an exemption. If, if the, you meet the criteria, you can come back into Western Australia subject to quarantine requirements. Look, we're in a pandemic, Lee. It's, th there's no perfect solutions here. What we're trying to do is ensure that we keep our state safe, we get our economy back up and running, and we don't have people get sick or lose their lives. When this pandemic started, Australians were told that what we had to do was flatten the curve. And, and you know, as you know, what that means is that instead of a huge spike in cases that overwhelm the system, you're trying to spread the cases out over time. When did that turn into a need to have zero cases? Well, um, Western Australia in particular um, managed to uh, crush the curve, if you like, and we have now had 158 days without a single case. So, to me, that is a better outcome than having outbreaks around the place. Now, I know there's some commentators in the East say it's better to have outbreaks and then you deal with them, but the consequence of that is people get unwell, there's economic dislocation, you have parts of the economy closed down. In Western Australia, that's not happening. So, to me, uh, the, uh, the, the, the best situation, perhaps the uh, golden situation, is the West Australian example, whereby you don't have cases and we have an economy that's open. What happens if a, if a suitable vaccine never becomes available? What do you do then? Well, obviously, we're all hoping for a vaccine, but what we've said, and this is the national approach, is that if they, um, if they get to know community spread in the east for 28 days, well, obviously, then we can look towards uh, the border being removed. But until that point in time, the health advice we currently have uh, is uh, the border can't come down. Look, the Commonwealth Government's got a border as well internationally. So, you know, no one, no one says that borders shouldn't be put in place. All we're saying in Western Australia is we've kept ourselves safe, we've got economic activity back, it's a good model. Premier, thank you for your time. Thanks, Lee.
Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.